Your organization in Vancouver, when you ran it, I, from my perspective, was always viewed as a progressive one. We heard about, you know, the travel that you had to deal with and how you tactically tried to approach uh, that. We heard about, you know, you'd bring people in to study sleep and say, how can we, you know, essentially trying to take away the disadvantage of travel you had in Vancouver being, mm -hmm. I guess, in that Northwest island, so to speak. Um, where is the sport of hockey at relative to other sports in incorporating technology and science that we can see a payoff with production in? Well, it's, it's difficult to generalize because there are teams that are doing <clears throat> or attempting to do more. Um, still, relative to other sports around the world, I think uh, you know, hockey is still significantly behind in how you view technology. Um, you know, the latest buzzword is analytics, but analytics is simply a word. And how you use data, the kind of data you're collecting, um, and the answers you're trying to get to are the critical pieces of analytics. And for some teams, that's one thing. For another team, it's completely different. And what I found in Vancouver was that um, we had a, a team that had been run a certain way for a long, long period of time. Um, we had severe disadvantages geographically that no one had even attempted to overcome. And uh, we got the US military involved, who are the best sports scientists in the world by far. And we used their fatigue management people. And they collected the data. And the key data were, was sleep patterns, um, time in the air traveling, time zones changed, and practice times. And so we built a predictive algorithm around those key features. We kept refining it, refining it, refining it. And eventually we had a number that we would start with at the beginning of the season for every game we played. And if that number was 90 or above, our winning percentage was 75% or above. If it was 90 or below, which is crazy to think that one number could be that predictive, uh, we would drop down to about 40 to 55%. So we began changing travel to get those numbers to 90. So if we had a data point during this week, we had to travel um, eight through eight time zones with this number of hours in the air, we would begin to adjust different things around that to get that number to 90. That's fascinating. And that seems like way beyond what anyone else would have been doing. Now, born out of, I guess, fun, uh, necessity, as you noted, mm -hmm. that no other team really had to deal with a lot of the things you did. It's interesting because a lot of organizations, as you said, analytics, it's whatever you want to focus on. What data are you choosing to groom? What's that process like of, of finding that right algorithm? Well, we're working here, we're, but, but is, is this spitting out what, something that helps us yet or not? Um, well, I find macro analytics um, almost useless um, for me. I, I think what you have to do is start with a problem and then you work your way backwards to collect the data and then you build the algorithm out of the data that's going to predict how you solve your problem. And because every day is different in the NHL, you, 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 know, you really need to have um, an organization that's built on adjustment all the time. Coaching adjustment, playing adjustment, management adjustment. And the way you do that is to work backwards.